Testimony teaching, Acts 26, slide 1, Paul's testimony to the king and his court. Paul's early life. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself. By manner of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They knew me from the first, and it would be willing to testify that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand, and I am judged for the hope of a promise made by God to our fathers." Why should we, it be brought, thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Thus, I also did in Jerusalem to many of the saints I shut in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and then they were put to death. I cast my vote against them." And I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and be exceedingly out, outraged against them. I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Uh, Paul's Jesus experience. While thus occupied as a journey to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests, at midday, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun and shining around me, those and those who journeyed with me. And when we had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It's hard for you to kick against the goads. So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand to your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness of both of the things which you have seen and the things which I will reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as the Gentiles, to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, and they may receive forgiveness of their sins and the inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Uh, Paul's post-conversion life. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but I declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout the region of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do the works benefiting repentance. For these reasons, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand witnessing both the small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets said. You will come, and the Christ would suffer, and he would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Then uh, uh, Festus speaks up, and he says, Paul, you're beside yourself. Your much learning has driven you mad. But he said, I am not mad, most fest, noble Festus, but I speak the words of truth and reason. For the king before whom I speak freely knows these things, for I am convinced that none of these things escapes his attention, since the thing was not done in a corner. And, and King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you believe. And Agrippa said to Paul, I almost persuaded me to become a Christian. And Paul said, Oh, to you, God, not only you, but to all those who hear me today, might become almost altogether such as I am, except for these chains. And when he said this, the king stood up, as well as the governor and Bernice, and those who sat with them. And when they had gone aside, he talked among themselves, saying, This man has done nothing deserving to death or chains. Your testimony, slide two. We have just listened to Paul's testimony to King Agrippa, Bernice, Governor Festus, and the court of Caesarea. Let's see how we can implement scripture to impact the world using your testimony. 
Slide three, full gospel businessmen, fellowship in America, marketplace teams moving with power. What is, what is the mission did Jesus have? In Luke 15, if a son asks you for bread from any father among you, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks you for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Luke fifteen eleven through 23. Jesus was sent to bring my children back to me. Slide six. Yes, indeed. But what is the good news? The good news is your father still loves you. He never stopped loving you. He wants you back so much that he sent Jesus to come for you. All you need to do is let him bring you back. Slide seven. What mission do you have? Slide eight, what is the full gospel? It is living the fullness of the gospel where your life manifests Jesus to the world. Signs and wonders flow from you and operate in communion with that of the Holy Spirit so the people may believe. Slide 10, after spending 40 days in the wilderness and being tempted by Satan, Jesus returns to Galilee victorious with the ministry and the power of the Holy Spirit. And he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty of the captives, and recover of sight to the blind, to set up the liberty of those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Slide 12, our Jesus experience. Slide 13, your testimony, the most powerful weapon. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Tell them your past, about your past, and relate them to you. Tell them how the Holy Spirit has been working in your life. It will amaze them. Above all, them about tell them about your Jesus experience. It will lead them to salvation. Slide 14, our mission. Show the world that Jesus is real, witnessing about our relationship. Use the power he has given you uh, to us as evidence that he is with us and supports us. Lead the men to reconcile themselves to the Father and the relationship would be in restored. Slide 15, fishers of men. I will found out for my friend's need. I will share my testimony with him. My testimony will be similar to his need. That's why God has put him in my life. I'll minister to the need of the miracle. I'll reconcile my friend to God. I'll minister to the Father's promise, the new birth, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the same time. I'll send him home as a missionary to his family. He already has a testimony to of his meeting with God. He can bring his family into the kingdom this day. I'll invite him to my chapter. I'll teach him to be a fisher of men to all the family and friends and hold the golden chain starts. Personal testimony of Nathan Cole. When I was a child, I loved to play soccer. When I was just a few years old, I was diagnosed with le leg uh, prosthesis disease, which prevents me from being able to run and play like the other kids. I traveled back and forth from Shiner's Hospital for crippled children in Houston, Texas for treatment. When we first went, 
They showed our family x-rays of how my hip socket had deteriorated nearly 40%. They put me into traction for two weeks and fitted me with braces and a wheelchair. Over the two-year period of time, friends were constantly praying for me. I can remember many moments when the power of God would cover me, and I knew that I had his hand was at work. Even though I was young, I remember making a commitment to follow Jesus and being empowered by the Spirit to be a witness to my friends. In April 1992, we went for a final checkup and the doctor showed us the x-rays that revealed a complete and total healing. There was no need for surgery. I could play soccer again. Slide 17, acceptance. Now that you have heard my testimony, I would like for you to know that God, more like I do, you may invite Jesus to come live inside of you and sincerely pray in the following prayer according to Romans 10, 9. Please pray this out loud. Lord Jesus, I want to stop trusting in myself and what I can do and start trusting in you and what you have already done. When you died for me on the cross, I know that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and I invite you to come and live inside of me. I want you to be my Savior and my Lord, which means being number one in my life. I want to repent and turn away from everything you in the Bible call sin. And I totally commit myself to obeying you every day for the rest of my life. Lord Jesus, baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Slide 18. You may use this as a worksheet to develop your testimony. God will bring you before us, men and women, those who need a, mo a mirror of our testimony. Our testimony will give them hope. Give your name and business occupation. Tell about what your life was before Jesus Christ, 25%, your Jesus experience, 25%, and your life after Christ and your life in Christ, 50%. Close with an altar call. Invite them to pray with you for salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Minister to their needs. Slide 19, the friend next door, a poem. You lived next door to me for years. You shared our, We shared our dreams, your joys and tears. A friend to me, you were indeed a friend who helped me when in need. My faith in you was strong for sure. We had such trust as should endure. No spat between us ever rose, but friends we were like, never our foes. What sadness then, my friend, to find that all you weren't so kind. The day my life on earth did end, I found you weren't a faithful friend. For all those years we spent on earth, you never talked about second birth. You never spoke to my lost soul and the Christ who takes me whole. I plead today from hell's cruel fire and tell you now my least desire. You cannot do the thing for me. No words today, my bonds will free. But do not err, my friend, again. Do all you can for souls of men. Plead for them now quite earnestly, lest they cast be cast in hell with me.